Hi, everybody. I'm Naomi Shehab Nye. I'm speaking from San Antonio, Texas, uh, where we've been at home for a month. And wherever you are, uh, I hope you're okay. I hope you're faring well in these very uh, unusual days and taking care of yourselves. And definitely, I have felt the positive power of poetry to help us all feel grounded in our own minds and connected to one another during this time of seeming disconnection, but really not because we are all together. So I'd like to share three poems with you. Uh, one from Mizna. This is from the 20 years uh, special issue, Prose, Poetry and Art, Exploring Arab America. I've been a big fan of Mizna ever since the beginning, and I'm so proud to to know about it, be part of it. And uh, this poem was called, uh, it was written for my Palestinian grandmother. And it's called, Every Day Was Your Birthday. Because she actually didn't know when her birthday was and she lived to be 106. So we used to joke that every day could be her birthday then and try to celebrate whenever we were with her. And I dedicated it for all the grandmothers of Palestine. But right now I'd like to just dedicate it to um, all the people worldwide who struggle in circumstances that often aren't seen by the public media or the news headlines, uh, but they manage to survive and maintain their dignity. Every day was your birthday for Siti Hadra. If light fell gently onto the window so, if no one you knew was tear gassed, if the children came home from school swinging their book bags and sat laughing, books in laps, to do the work you had never learned how to do. That was a good day. Siti placed a cut onion to her face to temper the fumes, whispering, tell this to the soldiers. I was born in the sliver of time the smallest eye of the apricot, the ripple of days one to another, cast upon wind in a far place. Don't know its name. Maybe five kilometers from here. There was a well my mother drank from on the night I was born. I think there were horses. If you want to celebrate me, start everywhere. So for all of you, we celebrate you. We celebrate endurance in difficult times. And here's a poem from my book called The Tiny Journalist, which is dedicated to Jana Jihad Ayad, a young Palestinian activist. Um, I think she's still 13. She might be 14 by now. She started when she was six and seven, taking videos of what went on around her West Bank village and posting them on Facebook so people could see what went on. Uh, this poem though is called Moon Over Gaza because I often think about everything Gazans struggle to survive, how incredibly difficult it is, and um, how elements of the universe just continue around this disastrous imprisonment of so many people. Uh, the stars shine, the sun shines, the flowers bloom, the waves wash up to shore. So this is Moon Over Gaza. I am lonely for my friends. They liked me, trusted my coming. I think they looked up at me more than other people do. I, who have been staring down so long, see no reason for the sorrows humans make. I dislike the scuffle of bombs blasting very much. It blocks my view. A landscape of grieving feels different afterwards. Different sheen from a simple desert, rubble of walls, silent children who once said my name like a prayer. Sometimes, I am bigger than a golden plate, a giant coin, and everyone gasps. Maybe it is wrong 
that I am so calm. And from my book, Transfer, I'll read a poem in memory of my father, Aziz Shihab, who was born and grew up in Jerusalem. His family lost their home in 1948, and uh, he would come to the United States as a university student. And over the years, he uh, maintained activism, always giving talks, always writing about the issues of justice for Palestinians. And um, after he died, I found some sentences just floating in his notebooks that I didn't recall ever seeing in any of his writings. So I wrote them down in my notebooks and later gradually for about 12 of his sentences, um, some poems started to be born in his voice. That was the surprise for me. And so all the sentences of this series of poems in transfer uh, come from my father Aziz. Everything in our world did not seem to fit. Once they started invading us, taking our houses and trees, drawing lines, pushing us into tiny places. It wasn't a bargain or a deal or even a real war. To this day, they pretend it was, but it was something else. We were sorry what happened to them, but we had nothing to do with it. You don't think what a little plot of land means till someone takes it and you can't go back. Your feet still want to walk there. Now you are drifting, worse than homeless dust, very lost feeling. I cried even to think of our hallway, cool stone passage inside the door. Nothing would fit for years. They came with guns, uniforms, declarations. Life magazine said it was surprising to find some Arabs still in their houses. Surprising? Where else would we be? Up on the hillsides, conversing with mint and sheep, digging in dirt? Why was someone else's need for a home greater than our own need for our own homes we were already living in. No one has ever been able to explain this sufficiently, but they find a lot of other things to talk about. Again, I'm uh, Naomi Shihab Nye, very grateful to you for your listening. I urge you to write poems about your own family experiences, the stories that were passed down, the lost sentences floating in your relatives' notebooks, who knows where they might go. Um, I'm so happy to be in touch with you.